I will begin reading in verse uh, verse number um, 35. Matthew 9 and verse number 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Father, I pray that you would help us tonight as we've opened and read your word, Lord, that we might uh, examine it, look at our lives through the prism of your word and see what we ought to be doing and how we ought to think. God, that we might give you all the praise and the glory for the opportunities you give us to do big things because you're a big God. We ask it in Jesus' precious name, amen. This familiar passage of scripture deals with an opportunity that Jesus takes when he sees the multitude coming out to him to challenge the the disciples to uh, focus on the spiritual needs of the people. The disciples, the apostles, uh, were much like us in that when uh, Jesus is trying to reach large crowds for, with, the, with the truth of the word of God, they saw obstacles. They said, uh, uh, you know, when there's a, a crowd gathered on the hillside, they look at it as, as an obstacle. How are we going to feed all these people? Jesus is looking at it as an opportunity. And, and very often we view the events of the world today as obstacles or problems or uh, you know, whether it's uh, dealing with, you know, our government or our circumstances or COVID-19 or whatever it might be, we're seeing obstacles when we need to be seeing opportunities. And so I want to just give you a three-point, real brief, quick outline tonight. Nothing uh, earth-shattering as far as revelatory But we're going to look at first the recognition, then their reaction, and then the response. The recognition, the reaction, and the response. So as far as the recognition, we find that Jesus is in the midst of healing people. Uh, We find that there, there are two blind men that come to him in verse 27. In verse number 32, There's the man that's brought to him that was dumb, possessed of a devil. Uh, You can go back farther into the chapter and you find that the Pharisees are following along and they, they see an opportunity to criticize Christ and they accuse him of casting out devils by the power of Satan. Uh, And, and so they're, they're a different class, a different case study. And I want to focus more on the disciples because we find that when Jesus began addressing someone in verse number 37, he talks to his disciples. And and so the Bible says that when he went out in the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. So let me ask you, first of all, what is it that you see in the world today? What do you see uh, in uh, the, uh, the things that are going on in the world, things that have captivated the news, uh, the COVID-19 for the last couple of years, um, the uh, war going on in Ukraine, and and our own challenges with our own government, the, uh, you know, the uh, 
I'm trying to figure out the nicest way to say this without getting us, you know, flagged or something. But, you know, the, the uh, things you see going on with the questioning of a, of a potential Supreme Court uh, justice. And it's very easy to get our eyes on the, uh, st- not get our eyes on the wrong things, but see the things that are around us in the wrong way as obstacles instead of opportunities. And to be sure, they they do present challenges. Um, it's amazing to see how God is providing for the opportunities going on in Ukraine right now. Um, I don't have a, a total update, but I think we're up to probably very close to $50,000 already that has come in. And I know of other churches that have already told me that they've taken up, they're taking up other offerings and, uh, and trying to get large, large amounts. Uh, there are individuals giving smaller amounts, but there are churches giving you know uh, thousands of dollars uh, in order to try to help uh, reach people for Christ in Ukraine, and it's not any you know it's would you would you choose the war? No, you wouldn't choose it. But if we're not careful, it seems like it's an obstacle to ministry. The 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 ministry there, twenty five years old, coming up this May, is now very scattered. There's over half of the church that's not even in the country right now. They're scattered in multiple countries. They're in Moldova. They're in Romania. They're, they're, I think some are even maybe in Poland right now. And so they're, they're scattered all over um, that part of the world. And, and it's like, okay, well, uh, it's an obstacle to uh, the church there, to the ministry there. And it is... If you think about ministry and about church in a very restricted, structured way, the same way as COVID interrupted our normal way of doing things. Uh, The way, you know, you couldn't have services the normal way. I remember coming in here with, you know, nine people, you know, fewer than 10, you know, nine people. And, uh, and, you know, having, you know, Hollywood church, you know, uh, just, you know, you got the camera and you, you know, you got the quartet coming in singing and, and, uh, sitting out, you know, set around different places in the auditorium. So it gives me somebody to look at and it looks like we're having church services. I remember the, uh, some of those, uh, those large plastic figures that we use for one of our conferences one time uh, for them. They were like military figures and setting them around the auditorium uh, for somebody to preach to and, and just a different kind of a thing. And these things to us, they are simply obstacles. And, uh, and I think God would have us to see them as opportunities. I was talking to, to Brother Mark about this and he said, you know, our, our, um, some of our folks are they're, they're in Romania. The, some of them are in Germany. Uh, and he said, they're, they're in Roma- the ones who are in Romania right now, they're not just there hiding out. They went there, and uh, there's a ministry there that Brother Mark is familiar with, and they went and attached themselves to that ministry and are working with um, refugees from Ukraine because some of them speak uh, Romanian, and they're helping them uh, uh, try, you know, translate for them, helping them find what they need. But in the process, witnessing to them, giving them the gospel, and uh, and people that you would never, uh, maybe never come across. My wife the, the, today, she said, you know, and it's you know, we look at it from one standpoint that, you know, as a pastor, I'm looking at that. You know, are these people ever going to all come back together? I, I don't know. Some of them may stay in foreign countries. They may never go back. If they do go back, they may not go back to where they were in Odessa. I, I don't know. So from a pastor's standpoint, it's just like, oh, man, you know, you labored for 25 years getting, getting the church to where 
you know, you, it was, and now it's and now it's scattered. But don't you see the same thing in the book of Acts? That they worked to get the church where it was, but then God scattered it. And it and it multiplied the gospel, not not diminished the gospel. Well, we've got to we've got to try to ha- have the opportunity that God help us see things and recognize things that He is likely working in. I was talking to Brother Preem this morning, and and I said, you know, it's really hard sometimes to know how to pray. Because you're in the middle of a war zone there, and it's things are getting more intense uh, near uh, Odessa. They're starting to hear. Uh, there's a lot more uh, rocket fire where they're trying to shoot down rockets coming in from the Black Sea. There's also uh, here be able to hear more gunfire around parts of the city, and so things are beginning to heat up there. And I said, you know, you're in the middle of a war. And, you know, you, can, you, you, you wonder, you know, you pray that, you know, God's going to stop the war, stop the killing, stop all this stuff. At the same time, as Christians, we recognize that God is likely in this, working his will, and we don't necessarily know how. And I said, you know, sometimes it feels frustrating to know exactly how to pray, but I said you can always pray for for uh, God's glory. You can always pray that that uh, God's will is going to be done, and that you're going to. You can always pray for yourself that you're surrendered to. Uh, if you're where God wants you to be, you just got to look for what He wants you to do, and those things just come before you uh, as God continues to open doors. Um, they gave a track, uh, Brother Mark said he gave a track to a lady and just trying to, to reach people for Christ. They've given out, I asked him to try to estimate how many tracks they've given out. He said, I don't know, thousands, thousands of tracks. And he said they gave a track to a lady and just said, if you need anything, let us know if we can help you. Well, they're trying to be a blessing to them. So uh, yesterday they get a phone call. Turns out her husband is, he's got something to do with, with the food acquisition for the military. And so they called Brother Mark last night, and, or, or this morning, it was this morning their time, called him and said, look, we've got extra food right now. At a time where food is becoming scarce, okay? We've got extra food right now that we are just going to have to throw away. But if you want to come get it, and you know people that can use it, then you can have it. So he, he, was, he had just finished picking up. He did, I didn't ask him how much food, but he said he just got done picking up a, a lot of food, and he's out distributing it to church members, their families, other people that that they've come across, that they know have needs. Um, and so, it's, you know, you're praying for God to stop this. At the same time, you're seeing God work through it. And so uh, I said, you know, you pray the best you can, but then you're surrendered to whatever God chooses to do. And he's got one of the men of his church that's in the military that's, you know, been kind of, you know, uh, requested to be in the military, uh, they, they, they pressed him into service. And uh, they've been concerned for him trying to find uh, uh, some body armor, bulletproof vest. So Brother Mark goes to ship out some boxes of literature to churches along the western uh, border of Ukraine. And he's standing in line behind two guys that are shipping out Bulletproof vests. <laughs> and he says, uh, excuse me, where did you get those? They said, we make them. He said, do you have any more? They said, yes, we do. And so he was able to purchase one. 
and he went and he said, I just got done delivering it to the guy in our church that's in the military, and he's wearing it right now. You're praying for God to do one thing because it's the only thing you can see that it just seems like the simple thing. God just stopped this, and God's saying, yes, but in the meantime, I've got these things for you to do. God's opening doors. So the question is, what do you see? We have a strange church here because we have some men that just every time something bad happens in the world, they get excited. They're just like, yes. I'm like, oh, you guys are strange. But anyway. <laughs> but it is, it is the looking for what God is doing instead of just looking as man sees. It's so hard not to just see things from a human point of view, isn't it? Because we see the corruption going on in the world, in our government, and we, we rail against it. We need, and by the way, we need to be salt and light. There's nothing wrong with that. But that can't be all we see because if that's all we see, then there's nothing but discouragement. So we must see as God sees. What is it that you see? What did Jesus see uh, when uh, he was going about teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. What did he see? He saw people. We're looking, we see a war. God sees people. People that need Jesus Christ. It seems as though there's a little window of opportunity right now where God is is allowing the bank to function. The banks have all been closed down. Brother Mark's been calling regularly to the bank. He got a hold of the bank uh, yesterday, and they said, we, we think we can get some money through right now. And so uh, we just sent uh, a sum of money over there today, and if that goes through, we're going to send some more. But the money we just sent through today was to purchase, and Mark gives me a different number. You have to understand that whatever Mark tells you may or may not be 100% accurate. You know, give or take 20% or 30% because he's just got too much going around in his head. He just doesn't focus. So it went from 60000 to 160000 to 112000 <laughs> So it's been come bouncing all over. But he just ordered... 112,000 tracks printed. Now understand that the paper company, or excuse me, the printer, and they've got a print shop there, but that many tracks, they just haven't printed. Plus, their printer in their church is in Germany right now. So he's not even in there in the church to, to do the printing. So they're just getting, they, they have a printer they work with on large orders. And, and so... Um, the printer's been out of paper. So he said, so Brother Mark called him and he said, I've got enough paper. I can, I can print 112,000 tracks. So we shipped enough money. We sent enough money to pay for 112,000, 112,000 tracks for missionaries and, and Ukrainian churches on the border, the western border of Ukraine, going into Poland, going into Moldova, going into Romania. And guess where all the people that are fleeing the country are going right now? They're going through the western border of Poland and Romania and Moldova. And the churches over there are completely out of literature to give them. And with uh, the blessing that God is, has given to have the print shop there in uh, Odessa, uh, there, the church there in Odessa, Lighthouse Baptist Church, it has become, it's like that's where all the churches in the country get most of their tracts and They've uh, uh, translated and printed, uh, I don't know, 15, 20, 25 books 
uh, into Russian or Ukrainian, and they supply those to other churches. And so when they, when they need tracts, they call Brother Mark, they call Brother Preen. So he's getting these tracts printed for these churches, and then they'll have to get them to them, and they're giving it these three and a half million refugees that are crossing the border. You know, they're, they're soon going to have tracts in their hands to give them as, they cro- as they're crossing the border. What an opportunity. And then it's like, okay, that's going to cost, you know, uh, X number of dollars, thousands of dollars. And this morning, get a phone call from a pastor down in Indiana, has a radio station. Says, hey, would you be willing to go on the radio this morning and let people know about the needs in Ukraine? How can people help? Well, as it turns out, we're ordering over 100,000 tracks today. And, and it's like, okay, folks, you know, here's the address, send them a bunch of money. <laughs> How God is working. It's nothing we're trying to do from the standpoint of fundraising and things like that. We haven't had to. Because God is in it. God is working and God is just supplying those needs. So I ask you as Twin Ports Baptist Church and the grand scheme of things, if you're going to try to pick a church to do a big thing, I don't know that you would choose this church from our resources, from our size, but yet God has seen fit to, to allow us to participate Hopefully because, hopefully because he sees that we have a heart for the things of God and, and he can trust us to do what he wants us to do. Hopefully that's the reason. But what, an, but, but what is it that you see? Do you see it as an opportunity or an obstacle? And not just Ukraine, but dealing with the things that we, we deal with here. The, the, the uh, simple truth is there are still people that are members of our church that have still never come back to church from the beginning of COVID. I, 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 I wonder, you know, what God's doing, but at the same time, God has opened doors of opportunities in other ways. The new ministry that got started this week, and and uh, and that seems to be going well. Um, the captive audience. But we can look at it and say, just all I see is obstacles. But but God is showing us opportunities. So then, not only the recognition, but the reaction, the reaction. When Jesus saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. I want to remind you that Jesus went about from city to village teaching in their what? Synagogues. What is that? It's a church. There are no shortage of churches. There's churches everywhere. Um, but you know, uh, when my wife and I were just recently in Kansas, li- I mean, the little tiny town in the middle of, uh, out in the country of Kansas, and there's at least two churches in that little town. Just, I mean, just, you could throw a rock from one and hit the other. And maybe they do. I, I don't know. <laughs> There's no shortage of churches. But just like when Jesus was going from church to church to church to preach the gospel, just because there are churches does not mean that there's not a shortage of the preaching of the word of God and the preaching of the gospel. It doesn't mean that there's no shortage of the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom and meeting people's needs Jesus saw the multitudes. He was moved with compassion. When we see the needs, what is our reaction? 
No shortage of churches. No lack of them. But do we react in, in such a way that it is a burden to us or that it is a, a blessing to have the opportunity? And then, let me say quickly, the response. Then saith he, oh, by the way, uh, what Jesus noticed about them was their spiritual needs ahead of their physical needs. We need to get our eyes less on the material, less on the immaterial. That which is seen compared to that which is not seen. Because that which is seen is temporal. The things which are not seen are eternal. And then the reaction, Jesus' reaction, he said, then said, uh, saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. You know what that is? That's information. That's the recognition of the, cir- the circumstances. Then he gives them instruction on what to do. Pray ye therefore, because there's a shortage of workers, because there's no shortage of work to do, pray for laborers. Pray, pray, uh, pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. There are no shortage of churches but there's no shortage of fields either. What will we do? Well, God give us the help, to, uh, give us the strength to do it, but what we ought to do is step up to meet those needs. Not just what is convenient, but what, what, is, what, is, what is needed. Jesus said, he pointed out, the harvest is plenteous. It's, there's no shortage of people that need Jesus Christ. But the labors are few. So then he said, pray for what you need. If what we need is more opportunities, pray for opportunities. If what we need is resources, pray for resources. If what we need is more people, more workers, pray for workers. But pray for what you need. Ask God to supply what is needed. And what is needed most is not just some some way to make it easy or to make it go away. But rather a way to meet the needs. So pray for what is needed. What did he say? Pray for laborers. Why? Because the laborers are few. Because the laborers are few. Now, if we saw the labors are few, we would recruit before we would pray. But God says pray. Why? Because we need God to send forth the labors. The opportunities that God is giving us as a church are... I don't know that we can overstate the importance of what is happening. For us, it might just seem like, well, this is just the situation we find ourselves in, so we're doing the very best we can, and it ought not be viewed that way. It ought to be, look at what God is choosing to allow us to, to do and to participate in. Another church this week, they called, and I've been on the phone to... Um, the head of their missions department. I've been on the phone to um, the um, the bookkeeper and getting everything worked out. And he, they said, uh, it's official. We took on Brother Mark for support. It's a church he's never been to. We know someone at that church, but it's a church he, he said, you know, and I asked him, I said, you know what his church, he says, you know, I tried to work it out last time I was home to go to that church. And he said, it just didn't work out for me to get by there. I said, well, they took you on for support. I said, do you need me to come and represent him? They said, not needed. We're going to stay him up for support and we're going to send a a one-time love offering as well. Another call from another church, not a big church. 
He said took up $10,000 offering for Brother Mark. I said, man, that's a huge offering from your church. The pastor goes, go figure. He said, it was amazing just to watch what God did. I just want to not miss the opportunity to see what God is doing. I don't want it to go by and us just deal with the crisis, deal with the problems, etc. No, no, no. Don't miss what God is allowing us to participate in. To get thousands, thousands and thousands. In. And before it's done, I convinced easily hundreds of thousands of tracks. In, uh, you know, when some of you were in Ukraine in the early days... Uh, you know, 25 years ago, where we'd go to a major intersection in Odessa and you'd stand on the corner and when the light would turn red, you walked out, like you're like, you're going to cross, you know, the pedestrian crossing. You're, you're like stepping out in front of all the cars b- backed up at the red light, but you wouldn't go all the way across. You just go to a gap between lanes and you'd start walking down through the lanes and handing tracks out on both sides, and you just take just just take the next next spot over, next spot over, next spot over, and there's like five lanes of traffic going one direction at this huge. Uh, it's a couple million people in the city of Odessa, huge intersections, and then you'd have to just watch because when the light turned green, they're going. So you'd you'd literally run, you know, dodging cars to get out. But but in a couple of hours was nothing to hand out 5,000 tracks. But that's, that's changed over the years where a lot of people, most people, won't even take a track. But it's getting like it was back then where almost no one refuses a track. You know, when, when people are confronted with crisis and problems, they tend to be a little more open with the possibility of faith. Whether that be famine or war or COVID-19 or 9-11 or whatever it is. What we need to do is look at the obstacles as opportunities. What is it that you see? Well, look around. You can see a world that cares nothing for the things of God. Or you can see lots of prospects. Lots of people that need the truth. You can say, well, there's churches everywhere. Or you can say, there's not enough gospel preaching. You can say, we need to pray that God gives us strength just to deal with all these problems. Or you can say, what's really needed? More labors, more people sharing Christ. I want to just challenge us as a church not to miss what God is doing, to be prayerfully uh, realizing. You know, most of the Christian life is not this. Most of the Christian life is this. Because it's not about our resources, it's about God's. And if we'll be obedient, he'll channel things through you. I just like being the middleman. I like being involved and seeing what God is doing and when you know you're trying to do one thing and God's like, nope, detour. We're gonna go this route and we're gonna accomplish more in a short period of time than you will at your current rate in forever. But we have to see it. We have to respond to it, and then we have to 
we have to react right, which is he saw the multitudes and, and was moved with compassion. That's the reaction. And then to respond with prayer and labor, labors. Father, I pray that you would help us to not lose sight of what you're of that the fact that you're working. The fact that that in all these things that we wish weren't happening, both in our country and in Ukraine and other places in the world, but certainly politically in our own country, we wish they weren't happening. There's no way around that, but to recognize that help us not to miss that you're working through all these things. Don't miss the big picture of the opportunity to preach the gospel and the more hopeless people feel, the more they're open to the help of the word of God. And Lord, I just pray that you would help us to, to be mindful of that and, and to not miss the opportunity to be on our face before you praying. God, not just, not just thankful for what you have already done and are doing before our very eyes. Lord, I just can't help but as I read through Psalms and to, 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 to uh, pay attention to the verses that talk about how great you are. But our Lord is, is mighty. And to God, to see what you are doing and providing that we could not do on our own. And yet, you're doing it through us and allowing us to have a part. God, I pray that we'll not lose sight of that and not miss the opportunity to recognize it and to pray, God, to send forth more labors into our harvest as well. We just give you the praise and the glory for what you will do in Jesus' name. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed.